Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here. In this photo editing tutorial on the AI driven powerhouse that is Luminar AI, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can create your own templates. So as I'm sure you're aware because of all the mad hype around templates, what they are is basically with one click you can enhance your photo and give it a specific look. But what if a specific look that you're after just isn't available as a template or you're just not fond of what has shipped with Luminar AI or maybe you just don't want to be using templates that other people are using and you want something more custom and bespoke unique to you. Well, in that instance, you need to make your own and that is exactly what we're going to do here. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to create your own template, how we save that template and how you can reuse that template on other photos. Also, how you can apply that template to multiple photos so that you can batch process and save yourself a whole heap of time. So you can custom create your own templates for all manner of looks that might be suitable for your type of photography and processing. Now in this particular example, I'll be working on a wedding photo and creating a soft vintage feel. Now if that's a look that might be appropriate to you in your weddings, portraits, or even say macro shots of flowers, something like that, copy along and by all means copy and save this template for your own use but if you're not really after a vintage look just follow along anyway because the actual process and the method involved is the same regardless of what type of template you're trying to create all right let's dive into luminar and get started so from within our catalog section we're just going to select a photo we want to work on it's this one here of the bride and groom doing their first look a very nice tender moment so let's see what we can do with the templates if we select the template option up here Straight away we can see that Luminar is making suggestions of selections of templates that may be useful to us. So the Essence collection, if we click a few of those, we can see what they're doing. So Fashionista, for example. And as that loads up, I'll be honest, if I look at my before and my after, I really don't enjoy this particular look for this photo. Normally that's fine because you can just click around and find a look that you do like. I mean, this is quite a soft process we've got here, but it's not really what I'm after. So let's have a look at how we can create our own template. To remove a template once you've put it on, you can just come down to the right corner here and just click Reset Adjustments. That's gonna put you right back at the starting point and we can come in and we can start editing the photo ourselves. So normally what I like to do when I'm processing a photo is work through these tabs here, so Essentials, Creative, Portrait and Pro in that particular order. And for the most part, I'll normally work top down to the bottom of each category. So a good tip for when you're creating your own templates is don't include anything that's specific to a particular photo. You want to keep things universal so that they're going to work on all manner of photos. So I'm going to avoid composition and arrays and jump straight into the light section. So I'm going to boost up the exposure just ever so slightly just because I want a brighter feel and I'm happy for all the photos that I apply this template to to be brightened up. Uh, I'm also going to increase the contrast, smart contrast and bring the highlights back down just to protect those. The shadows I'll leave where they are as I will with the blacks and whites as well. Now if you're creating a vintage look, a really good thing to do with the curves is just to click on this bottom point here which represents the blacks and just lift that up and if you see as I lift that up it just washes out the photo so we don't want to do that too much but certainly lifting those blacks up slightly can help to give a more washed out and vintage feel and the same if we grab the whites and bring those down you can see that the pure whites just get a little bit toned down so I like to bring those down just a just a smidge and just with this first panel here the light panel if we just look at our before and after we can see that we're well on our way. Let's jump into the AI Enhance and I always like to add a bit of Accent AI. If we push it all the way to the top, we can see that this is our before and this is our after. Um, it's doing a little bit too much enhancement for my liking, but if we keep it soft and subtle, maybe around 20, maybe even push it to 25, something like that, um, I think that will be appropriate and be acceptable on most photos. We go to structure AI. Usually I'd be increasing the structure within a photograph, but on in this case, because I want to go for a more soft look, I'm actually gonna reduce the amount down slightly. And as we jump into the color tab here, one of the key things with 
vintage photos is normally they're slightly desaturated. So let's grab the saturation slider and bring that down. We don't want to go too crazy. We don't want to make it into a black and white. We want to keep a sense of color in there, but we just want it to be a little bit softened. The same with the vibrance as well. Just bring that down slightly. If we wanted to, we could play around with individual colors and changing those around. But as I said, you want to keep this as best you can universal and able to apply to as many photos as you possibly can. So you get the most bang for your buck out of your templates that you create. So I'm going to leave those all alone. Let's close that down and let's jump into the vignette section. So what you can do with a vignette, if I push it all the way to the left hand side, you can see that we're darkening those edges and that just helps to focus your attention more to the center of the frame. And with older cameras, what you'd sometimes get is a much brighter spot in the middle of the frame. Uh, so that's quite a useful tool if we did want to include that. Or if we take it to the right, you can see it brightening around the edge of the frame. And that is also sometimes something you'd get on older cameras where the edge of the frames would get bleached where a little bit of light would leak into the camera. So that's also an option. I wouldn't recommend using it anywhere near the full amounts, but uh, in this case, let's, let's go for a slight darkening around the edges. And in fact, I'll push that all the way so that I can see what I'm doing as I move the other sliders. So I'm going to bring the size down a little bit so it's tighter and then I'm going to feather the, feather it out just so it's a softer transition as we feather that. And now I can reduce the amount to a point where I feel happy that it's a nice, soft and subtle darkening of the edges. Nice. So now we're done with the essentials tab. Let's look at our before and our after. And again, we are well on our way. So let's jump into the creative tab and see what we can do there. Things like sky, augmented sky and atmosphere, again, they're going to be specific to individual photos. So I would leave them out of templates. Same with sun rays. Uh, if we built a sun ray effect into a template, uh, you're going to need to move the position of the sun for every shot. It's only going to work for shots where the sun is in it and you're going to end up having to remove it each time from when you apply that template. So just leave that well enough alone. But we will jump into mood here and now we've desaturated. What we can do is as we roll over these moods, these color LUTs as they are known, they will actually start to introduce color toning into the image. So you could actually find something that you really like for your own process here and just go with that. But I'm going to go with this Long Beach. It's quite nice and warm. Uh, if we push it all the way to the right, you can see what it's doing. It's introducing these kind of orangey ready tones, uh, but I don't want to add that much. Uh, let's just go somewhere around that 30 point where it, the default is, is actually a really nice place for most of these moods to be applied at. If we want to take the color toning further, what we can do is come into this toning section here. And for the highlights, we might want to choose like a yellow color. Now you can see if I'm clicking and trying to drag this hue slider, nothing's happening. And that is because my saturation is at zero. You actually need to increase the saturation a little bit before it actually lets you move the hue slider. So if you're trying to move that and you're wondering why the hell nothing's happening, uh, that would be why. Now you don't want to over bake these, uh, keep everything nice and light. Um, so our saturation, we can keep that down, I don't know, around a 13 or something. Same with the shadows. Let's boost the saturation up to start with and let's just move that. And what I'd like to do is just introduce a kind of bluey purple, just as a complementary color to that yellow in the highlights. And if we turn that off and on, that's super subtle, um, but we can leave that in. Now using the matte effect is really good for creating a kind of vintage feel. So if I push that to 100 and back down, you can see the change that that's making. I don't want anything that extreme, but if I play with these sliders here, and just find something that I quite like the look of. If we look at our before and our after, yeah, that's quite nice. Here we've got another option to add color toning. So again, if we push this all the way to 100, that enables us to better see what we're doing here and what color we're working with. So if we wanted to, we could introduce a color kind of like this into the shadows, but without that level of intensity. So now we can see what color we're introducing. We can now just slowly dial that in just so it's a nice subtle hint of that. So this is our before and our after. 
And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I'm quite a fan of the mystical effect. If I push that to 100, you can see it just makes everything uh, glow soft and dreamy and gain hundreds way too much. But if we use it judiciously, just with a little bit of care and attention, you know, not going too crazy with it, somewhere around 17, let's say, let's turn that off and on. It's just giving it a nice ethereal glow. If someone were to see this photograph, they might not be able to pinpoint that there was a glow applied to this. Um, but it just gives it that certain je ne sais quoi, that little, that little something something um, that just helps to elevate that image. Now because this is a vintage look, we could introduce some film grain. So if I start to introduce the grain, uh, what you'll notice is that it looks pretty nasty on the initial render of Luminar. I just want to explain something. If we zoom in, you'll see that these, this rendition changes. So this is at 100% and what we can do is just drop this back to a point where we feel it's just starting to add a little bit of filmic grain and that starts to get rid of an almost kind of plasticky look that we had before if I take that off and put it on. That just gives it that nice filmic quality. But here's the thing, if I zoom back out from this by double clicking my mouse you'll see that the rendering of the, that grain is not particularly attractive uh, but in the final output render from Luminar that's going to look great. So we'll leave that where it is. Now I'm going to say I'm happy with this template. I'm really pleased with it if we look at our before and after. I feel like we've come a long way but it's perhaps not as aggressive as some of those other templates that uh, ship with Luminar as standard. So from this to this and if we feel like, okay, it's still a little bit too much, what we can do is, you see down here in this uh, right hand corner, we can just grab this slider, and this is an intensity slider. 100% of the effect, or we can bring it back to something a little more subtle, maybe like 80%, something like that. So now we've got our before and our after. We've got our slider for before and after, and I really like that. So how do we save this as a template that we can access again? Well, it's really simple. Come down to these three little ellipses, the three dots here, and click Save. And now that template is accessible to us. If we come to Templates, and what we want to do is come down to this little star selection here, which is My Collection. So this is the templates that Luminar suggests, and this is your collection here where the star is. Click on that and come to user templates and we have this one here that says template name obviously that is not very helpful to us so we're going to click on the ellipsis again click rename and call it something appropriate hit enter and now we have that template available to us so if we want to apply that template to a different photo so here's another one of another bride and we could just come to AT soft vintage click on that and there you go we have that vintage effect applied to that. Now you may want to make some adjustments. You, you would have seen originally that this photo was slightly underexposed. So all you need to do if you want to make any changes is just jump into the edit section and we can come to our light and we can just boost the exposure up a little further. And that is how you reuse your own custom templates. It's as simple as that. Now the fact that we've overexposed the sky now slightly, I'm really not worried about that at all. That's an easy fix with Luminar's new local masking feature. And if you'd like to see me showing you how to use the local masking to fix this up, I'll share a video with you that you can click in that top right now. So out of curiosity, it's always nice to try a few photographs with a template that you've made, just so that you can check and that you're happy that it's doing the effect that you want. And you, like I say, you want it to work universally. So if we click AT Soft Vintage and we let Luminar do its rendering thing, we can see that that's done a pretty, pretty good job. It certainly applied that same look that we created before to this image. I do feel that that initial rendering of film grain is just a little distracting, to be honest, but trust me on the final edit, um, the final render, that would actually look great. So if we turn the film grain off, you can see that that looks much, much nicer, and much cleaner image. Uh, but that film grain on the final render, it's not going to be as aggressive as this. If Once you see that render, see it drops back. So it's just an initial preview. When you see it like this and it's quite grainy, uh, the actual finished output will not look like that at all.
and it will be a nice, soft, subtle addition to the template. Okay, now that we know we've got a template that we like and that works for these photos, what we're going to do is open it up and just apply to an original of any photo that soft vintage look. And from here, what we can do is copy these adjustments. So come into adjustments and copy adjustments by right clicking on the photo. And then within the catalog section, you're able just to select a range of photos by say shift clicking on a range. So let's go all the way to this one. Now all the photos that fall between this photo and the one we just clicked on, they are all selected. And if I go right click adjustments, paste adjustments, these will now have that vintage effect applied to them. So just to check that, let's open this photograph and look at our before and our after. Great. We can choose another one here and look at our before and our after. And again, we see that's applied. And just like that, you can see how we're able to apply our template and our adjustments across a whole range of photos and save yourself an absolute boatload of time. The fact that you're able to create your own templates and then apply them across the board to multiple images with just with a few clicks is just really powerful. Now I did 10 years of wedding photography. They nearly took me to the brink of a mental breakdown. So I've stepped back from them now. But if I was still doing weddings, I would be utilizing templates and I'd be doing all of my initial adjustments so that I'm getting all the exposure and white balance all consistent across the whole wedding day portfolio and then I would be applying once I'd done that applying this template to those photos once they'd had those initial adjustments applied and then you'd know you're having a uniform look right through the whole wedding day and that just looked really beautiful and cohesive if you're watching this you've probably already got luminar but if you don't I've got a link below and I'd really appreciate if you're buying it please use that link because it just helps me out they give me a small commission and that helps me keep creating free content for you guys Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.